And, and we found the hidden sign. And that's it. So it looks like, it's looking like we're not gonna find a place to camp on the rim, but we're gonna keep driving and find out. The Mugion Rim is also famous for the Mugion Munster. We are Dave, Karen, and Rudel. In 2018, we set out to explore one adventure at a time. Join us as we continue our journey to find the best free camping. This is great, I love it. Today our journey takes us to the Mugion Rim. But wait, 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 wait. Before we go any further, we have to talk about how the heck do you pronounce this? Is it Mongolian? Is it Mugion? Is it Mugion? Is it Mogoyon? Maybe we should just call it the rim. We are in the Coconino National Forest on the Mogollon Rim. This has been on our radar for some time. And we noticed a lot of the roads have uh, road closed. No motor vehicles be on this point. So we found one that does not have one of those signs that goes out to the point. But I feel like it's too good to be true. <laughs> and there it is. Yep, there's two really nice camp spots at the end of this and we thought that's where we were going to stay. We came back to just do some video work. And, and we, we found the hidden sign. And that's it. So it looks like, it's looking like we're not going to find a place to camp on the rim, but we're going to keep driving and find out. Well, bummer. That was an awesome spot. I know. This is like the best ever. And that's why nobody was there. Yep. Okay, we'll continue on. The rim is believed to be named for Juan Ignacio Flores Mogollon, the colonial governor of New Mexico from 1712 to 1715, whose political career did not go so well, but he had an excellent reputation as a soldier and a profitable miner of gold, silver, and copper in the area. Or perhaps a name came from an infestation of parasitical plants such as mistletoe, which in Spanish is mogion, and is commonly found in the ponderosa pines to this day. Known as the backbone of Arizona, the rim begins in the Sedona Flagstaff area and extends approximately 200 miles all the way to the New Mexico state line, with massive drop-offs as much as 2,000 feet in some places. Today we are in Arizona, and this is the Muggy on Rim. We took Highway 87, got off on the Rim Road, which is all gravel, and this is what it looks like right here and went 10 miles down to find this campsite here in the National Forest. And it is a little bit closer to the road than we like. We like a little more distance than that just for privacy and being able to keep uh, Rudel off leash. But we had our heart set our, on camping right on the rim for at least our first or second night. And there are quite a few places that look like they were open to camp on the rim that they have closed. And this was one of the first ones that we've came to. And look at the view from here. Some say that you can see over 100 miles on a clear day. And there is a little bit of smoke in the air. And I'll get as close as I can without feeling too uncomfortable. 
but it dropped straight off. Wow. This is a pretty cool sight. And we're right in the trees here, and I've already noticed that it makes a very pleasant sound when the wind's been blowing. And we're up high enough in elevation to where the temperature is at least 10 degrees cooler than it was when we were down in the valley. And this is not all that far away from Phoenix. Jerry found herself a nice little place here to relax, take in the sights. And it's awesome, huh? It's, the views are incredible. The views are incredible, and there's a good mix of sun and shade. I'm not going out there at all. I'm sitting right on a geological survey marker. Does it say the elevation? From 1933. 1933? 7,494 feet. Wow. Above we, sea level. We are way up here. Look okay. at the views. Yeah, that's tough for me to look at. <laughs> I do like it though. I'm surprised you can fly the drone. No, the drone doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> Being in an airplane, flying the drone, none of that's worrisome, but. I can't wait to see this from the drone's perspective. This is beautiful. Oh, this is gonna be fun to fly on. I like the looks of the trees, how green they are compared to the white rock. Yeah, it's not all ponderosa. Yeah. I did notice a couple of trees that are growing right out of what looks like solid rock. Yeah, I love that when that happens. Because of the steep drop off, I'm trying to explain to Rudel that we cannot play ball on this side of the street. That we have to cross over and there's a trail on the other side that goes down to a really nice grassy area. And that's gonna be Rudel's ball playing. Just because it might get crazy and go over the edge and I'd hate to see Rudel chase the ball over the edge. That wouldn't be a good thing. He's leading me to the van where his ball is. And he keeps looking back to see if I'm following him. He's like, it's over here. The ball's right here. You, do you know where it is? It's right here. I know where it's at. It's right inside the door. And I'm almost embarrassed to show the inside of the door because it's Rudel's gear, but it's packed as full as can be. And that's what Rudel wanted. That's what he wanted. Should we go across the street and play? All right, come on. This way, Rudel. This way, let's go across the street where it's safe and play. Good boy, get your ball. Bring your ball with you. Yeah, good job. This is the trailhead that we're parked right across from, and it was built in the 1870s, the early 1870s. And it's over 200 miles long. So this might be the reason why they kept uh, the camping open right across the road, is so people can backpack in on this this trail although i don't see it looks like an old road but i don't see any human tracks on it right, we're gonna walk down a little bit see if we can find a place to play ball that won't hurt rudel's feet and i see some sand right up there good boy at one time this road was open to motor vehicles it looks like maybe not too long ago and there was additional camping down here. But this is the perfect little area. You could either hike in here. It's not far from where we're camping. Set up a tent and camp. Be a good time to see how your gear works. Do a shakedown trip. Or to bring Rudel down here to play ball. Because it's all sand and grass. He can't hurt his paws. Go get it, Rudel. Oh, it's really nice down here. Just needs a little spring or a creek. Good boy, Doodle.
Good catch. Good catch. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, good job. Oh, this is the perfect place to play. Lots of shade, sand, grass. Rudel's ready to take a break already. And there is a spring about a mile down this trail. So I'm gonna go check it out, see if there's any water in it, and set up a game camera and see if any critters come by tonight. So I thought that might be fun. All right, so I found the spring. This is the first noticeable amount of water where it kind of pools up. I'm gonna take a walk down. This area is pretty steep and thick with trees. So I'm gonna look for, see if I can find a bigger pool with a little bit of an opening and then set the camera up. I'm gonna go downstream just a little bit here. Take a look. I think this pool is gonna work out perfect. And there's a little bit of animal sign here, some trails running around. I'm hoping something follows up this creek and stops right here and gets a drink of water. So I need a nice small tree to hook a camera up to. I think I'm gonna use this one right here and then point it at the water and see what happens tonight. This could be awesome or it could be nothing. It could be a bust. But I hiked down in here and it was steeper than I thought it was gonna be. All right, I got the camera set up kind of towards the base of this tree and it is pointing right in this direction. So hopefully we'll get something on it. We'll come back tomorrow and see if we got a surprise. All right, now to hike back to camp. I'm actually thinking about hiking up the creek a little bit, see if I can see where it exactly comes out of the ground. Right here up the trail, you can see this, this is elk scat, but it's all dry. And it could have been from a long time ago, but at least the presence is here. I'm excited to see what happens. So Dave set up the trail camera. We've come down to see if we caught anything on it other than Rudel. He saw us snipped it all up. Well, what'd we catch? I caught you setting it up. <laughs> and I caught Ru Rudel walking in front of it. Oh, bummer. Nothing else came here last night. So all night long, nobody came to the watering hole. We're not seeing too much recent activity, but we're gonna put it on this tree. And we're gonna face it in this nice, beautiful clearing with all this grass to eat. The Mugion Rim is also famous for the Mugion Munster, or Arizona's Bigfoot. In all our travels across the United States and multiple forests, we have never seen the elusive creature. But we are open to the possibility. This is our attempt at some light-hearted humor. It's another super windy day. I was hoping to fly the drone, but that's not going to happen. Instead, I'm gonna go hunt for wild edibles. Uh, right now it's May 1st, it's early in the year. 
The snow has just melted. I'm not expecting to find a huge amount of wild edibles out here, but anything I could find for a salad would be great. Of course, anytime I'm hunting for wild edibles, make sure you do your own research. Don't take my word for it. Uh, with that said, let's go see what we can find. I usually don't harvest anything this close to the road just because of dust and exhaust. Of course, in a survival situation, this is all good to go, but this area gets really good sun exposure. And just taking a look around, there's a lot that's edible right here in one small area. One, as you can see, the bright yellow flowers here, that's dandelion. And the entire plant is edible and they're nice and young. And not very far away, this is wild strawberry. So those are gonna be ready in about a month. They're already starting to bloom right here in this location. Uh, you might be able to see uh, this bush right here. This bush looks to me like it's going to be red raspberry and it's a it's a several months away from producing any fruit, but it's got round stems. It's got uh, small barbs that are close together. So that's why I'm thinking it's red raspberry. There's a small chance it could be blackberry, but either way that's gonna be edible. Um, right here you have thistle. The entire thistle plant is edible. I would not harvest or eat it right now because the stem is one of the most sought after parts of the plant to eat. And it hasn't even started. And just looking around, I mean, that's a lot for just a little area. And then right here, I'm seeing some very young mullein. Of course, you can make teas out of that. And a whole bunch of berries, red, which I think are red raspberries, all up through the hill here. I did also see some clover, it's pretty young, probably not ready to harvest. And there is a little bit of uh, rose hips in here or wild roses, and those won't be ready till the fall. But that's pretty good just for one little tiny area. Um, I'm really happy with what I see, especially for how early in the year it is. I was just gonna show you something that we haven't seen for quite a few days, and that is these pine needles aren't blowing all over the place. But just as I'm starting to say that, the wind's coming up again. But it's not so bad right now. I'll be, I think I'll be able to get the drone up. I think we're gonna continue down the Mugion rim here and see what else we can find. This has been a, a nice location. It was actually better than I thought. Um, not as many cars on that close road, but we wanna find a place where we can play with Rudel and not worry about being on the edge of a cliff like we are right now. And maybe just a little more privacy. Oh, I did wanna add that we had kind of a light show last night with a bunch of side-by-sides and coming down the road right beside us and they're all lit up with different colors. And I actually thought it was pretty cool.
But this looks like a good day to continue on and explore more of the area. <laughs> and go find some water. Maybe we can find some water. Some water to kayak in. Yeah, that sounds pretty fun. People have been going by with kayaks. So I know there's lakes up here. Yeah, I did see a couple on the map. But this is a large area to explore. This rim keeps going for uh, more than 200 miles. And that's a lot of national forest to check out. And I think we'll pack up and get ready. Right, we made it to Knoll Lake and the campground's closed and there's no camping within the last uh, two miles on the way into the lake. But behind that looked like there was plenty of free camping. <laughs> Rudel couldn't wait. He had to get in the water. I see a bunch of baby minnows or at least a bunch of small fish. Oh, that's a good one. Take it easy. That's a good stick. <laughs> good boy. Riddle approved. Yeah, Riddle loves it here. He know this is he knows that this is the kind of destinations that we're going to. That's why he gets so excited in the van. This is the kind of spots we're always going to, huh, Rudel? Oh, this is nice. All right, so what exactly happened here, Carrie? We were looking for another <laughs> camp spot. Okay, so we went to Knoll Lake and um, I guess we got discouraged because a lot of the roads had been closed yeah and there was some camping but it was two miles away from the lake we were hoping to camp the lake and we thought well let's just find something else and as we were driving down the road we started thinking about cheeseburgers <laughs> so that's pretty much when it all went downhill because we found, was... we found several places we could have stayed the night yes that were nice yes that's very and, true and we chose cheeseburgers <laughs> so we just kept driving and driving and driving. I will admit, so we came in uh, on Highway 87 and there was a lot less people camping on that side of the rim. And as we got further east towards um, Highway 260, it got very busy. There started being a lot of people, a lot bigger campers. Um, just the road was just constantly dusty. Yes. And, and at this point, I think we're just going to go have some food and I don't even care where we stay the night tonight. Honestly, it could be a rest stop. I will say when we crossed from the Coconino National Forest into the Sitgreaves, Apache Sitgreaves National Forest, they are wanting you to camp within 300 feet of the road. Yeah, and we noticed 300 feet of the road, that's where all the dust is. So we, we were kind of hoping to find a place a little bit more remote, but the style of camping I think is changing in that area of the National Forest. Absolutely. And with Rudel, um, we can only do so many days next to the edge of a cliff and so many days next to a road. Yeah. So 
the camping on that section and the muggy on rim, I would say it's for very small vehicles. We had a hard time passing a tiny Airstream. Yeah, so on the west side coming off of 87, I'd say that's for smaller vehicles. And then on the east side going on to 260, that's where the larger vehicles are able to camp. Absolutely. So now we are off to find some cheeseburgers. Yep, let's get some food. <laughs> Everything you dreamed about all day. It is. <laughs> it's even better. This is Sholo Campground right on Sholo Lake, just two miles outside of town. Usually don't do campgrounds, but we needed showers and we're gonna fill up full of water and but this is a really nice little campground. It doesn't feel like it's on the edge of town and by the signs posted all around it, it looks to be in a national forest. Now, Rudel usually doesn't stay on leash much. Um, another reason not to stay at campgrounds for us, but it's just one night and he's not gonna get to play ball today, which he is not used to. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But a cool little campground. How's it coming? Slowly. <laughs> it looks good. Well, there's dust and dirt in every crevice. We were probably overdue even before the dust hit, so. I think we were. I don't remember the last time we did this. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Rudel wants to know what's up because we've been doing a lot of cleaning. Rudel, that's not helping the cleaning. But we really needed an opportunity to clean. Being in the desert, we didn't have water and when you do a deep clean like we did we wash the floors we wash the walls we wash the ceilings we wash the dash we wash the door we washed everything looks like a brand new van yeah we made the most of this campground and did some long overdue cleaning while well, we have water and we have a place to uh throw our garbage out and everything worked out good we were like carrie says we have most of the time we have to limit our use of water and we used a lot of water to clean. So um, it worked out great and man, it looks good. It does, it looked really good. And we got showers. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron or check out our new merchandise at oneadvancereatatime.com. We also have stickers available in our website store. Thank you for watching.